guys and welcome to tutorial number 10 for Silings 12.2 in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to do a counter that counts up and down but first I have to go ahead and build a part of the counter the reason I have to build the counter by parts is because the counter requires different modules in our case it will be a clock divider basically a clock divider what it does it uh, slows the clock on our FPGA because the clock on our FPGA is very fast it will slow it down so that we are able to see our output on our segment display the segment display is the the little rectangle on top of the buttons on your FPGA that is where you'll be able to see your count up or your count down and the modules you will require will be a clock divider, a counter module, and a and a seven segment display module. This uh, seven dis seven segment display module basically helps you to see the output in in numbers, or it will let you see it in a uh, hex. So from zero to f. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and build my seven segment display. That will be the first thing I want to do because it's the mo the simplest of them all. Okay, so parallax module. I'm gonna name it. so let's go ahead and write the inputs I'm going to call my input hex for the value that will be coming in from the counter so the hex is the value that comes from the counter's output to my 7 segment display so hex and then I'm going to write the value that we actually will be seeing on our board I'm going to call it display display now let me go ahead and declare my and that's all we need for a seven segment display we basically basically need an input and an output so i'm gonna uh, declare them as input and output so input and the value that i'm going to get from my counter is a four bit value so i'm gonna write it as three through zero uh, hex and the reason we need a 4-bit value is because our 7th segment display on our board requires a 4-bit value for every anode. And for uh, the anodes basically are, let me show you guys, are these things. Your board only has 4, so if you were just to see the top here, this is how your board has. It only has 4 and they look like 8s. Basically what an anode is, is uh, under it, it has LEDs, so it has seven LEDs that allow you to see a number, a letter, or something, whatever you, if you manipulate it, you're able to see a figure, but for that you need more anodes. For us, we're only able to see letters and, and numbers for now. So let's go ahead and continue. So the output, put would be a a 7 bit output now again the 7 bit output is due to the fact that our own add nodes have a uh, 7 LEDs so again 7 LEDs if you count them it's 7 LEDs so we're basically going to tell it what do we want if we get a zero, 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 for example, an input of zero, 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 we want our display to show zero. So we're gonna tell our our display: if you get a zero, 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 I want you to display the number zero. Okay. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and do an always block at, and this always block will be sensitive to our input. And inside that always block, I'm going to do a case statement that goes through every single case. 
So, <laughs> to every single case of of my inputs. So, if I were to get a 4-bit input of 00, zero my output will be display equals to 7 bit zero, 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 1 and the reason it's uh, this is because if we look at a picture of an anode you need a zero so basically you need all the other you need everything around on and the G off so the way our anodes work is if you put a one, it turns it off. If you don't put a one, if you put a zero, it turns it on. So I'm gonna put a a one on my G right here for in order to make this a zero. So basically, it's just if you put a zero on the anode, you will get a you get your LED will turn on. If you get a if you put in a one, it will turn off your LED. So the way I'm doing this is if you guys it'll be easier if you guys put this comment up here. So I'm gonna have a A B C D E F G. So I'm turning off G and everything on else is on for my zero. Now let me go ahead and continue. If I were to get a 4 bit 0, 0, 0, 1, then I have to write a 1. So I recommend you guys to write this on paper and try to figure out if you turn in a, turn on a if you want a 1, what do you need to turn on and what do you need to turn off? So that's the way I did it when I started this class. And it was easy for me and after that I just kind of understood everything also I, was, I wasn't I didn't have to write it down so then for a one I need a one zero zero one 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 and so just basically keep going like that do all your inputs if you were to get all the inputs up to up to F and then your output I'm gonna finish it up and then I'll explain it in more detail so I wrote every single case from 0 to F of my input to my display and what will come out. So basically what you do in this module, you're telling it, you're getting this input. So turn on these LEDs on your anode. And that way you create the zeros, 1, 2, 3, the counter. You basically create the what you will be able to see on your anode. So if you look at it here, Go ahead and zoom in, or maybe let me pop it out so the way you guys could see it. Okay, so what it does is getting an input and then displaying. So, and then for make sure that before you end your case, you put a default, or else you're going to get an error. You need to get put a default of what you would like for your display to show in case none of these cases show. In my case I want to turn everything off. So I put all once. And what you see on the right here, this column of comments, is basically was basically what I wanted to put for in case because usually lights work, LEDs work where you put a one, it turns on. So I put them the other case. See I put them the opposite. Basically the not not of the what I have here, but that was just for my purpose of understanding how they work. So again, uh, the LEDs on our FPGA will be turned on if you give them a zero, and they will be turned off if you give them a one. But these are only for our LEDs on our anodes. And the, again, the anode is the is the top on top of the buttons you will see something like this that looks like an 8 they're basically not on right now but you will see them it's where your when you turn on your board it says the run those are your anodes and the anodes have seven LEDs inside 
and with this program what you do is you tell it turn on and turn off these LEDs to display whatever you guys want to display in my case I want to display the numbers 0 through F in hex so that's how this works now let me go ahead and build a test bench for it so we could see how it works in a in a um, simulated environment and I'll be right back alright guys so I built the test bench and I'm just gonna show it to you I basically just run through every single input and display my output so if you look at it I'm just basically running through every single one of my inputs and doing a display so I can see my input and then my output so let's go ahead and simulate it I checked it already so make sure you check it for any errors simulate it and check it and see if your your output is what you expected so that's it for this one I will make a part 2 of this video uh, sometime this week and post it on YouTube for you guys and I hope it helps out with the last project so that's it good luck guys and I'll see you soon